welcome to the next session of uh, unit number two uh, which is uh, bipolar junction transistor and its biasing so let us start with the example uh, here the problem statement is given that for npn transistor which is connected in common emitter configuration even the circuit diagram is also given as a part of the problem statement so most of the data uh, to solve the unknown parameters are given. Uh, the question is calculate transistor currents IB base current, IC collector current, VCE that is the voltage between collector and emitter terminal which is shown over here and PD that is the dissipation power and the value of beta in the problem statement is given as 300 right so here we are uh, supposed to find out two currents the first one is the base and the second is the collector current uh, these uh, currents will help us to find out vce voltage drop across collector and emitter and from that we will find out uh, magnitude of pd so let us begin with the base current so here it is written that uh, by using kvl low at the input side input side means that is the input portion input portion is over here because in common emitter configuration base terminal behaves as an input terminal and the collector terminal behaves as an output terminal right so this portion is the input portion and here uh, this portion is the output portion so when we apply the kvl at the input side so starting from this uh, supply uh, let us uh, write down the equation the v bb thereafter from um, going through positive to negative terminal of uh, rb so the voltage drop across rb is defined as uh, ib into rb ib into rb right the current which is flowing in the base terminal is uh, base current so ib into rb is the voltage drop across rb resistor and minus the voltage drop takes place between the base emitter junction inside the transistor right so that is v b e is equal to zero so this is the equation we get uh, when we apply kvl at the input side in this circuit diagram so by rearranging these terms that means uh, sending the second and the third term in this equation on the right hand side we get vbb is equal to ib into rb plus vbe in the previous example also we have uh, considered vbe is equal to 0 0.7 because uh, the base emitter junction is in the forward bias condition so the voltage drop across voltage drop uh, takes place across the forward bias the junction is nothing but the 0 0.7 volt right so by making ib as a subject of equation so I can send this VBE on the left hand side and this RB in the denominator on the left hand side. And by rearranging the terms, we get the equation IB is equal to VBB minus VBE divided by RB. VBB is given in the circuit diagram 10 volt. Uh, uh, we have assumed VB is equal to 0 0.7. So substitute VB is equal to 0 0.7 over here. And RB is also mentioned in the circuit diagram that is 1 mega ohm. So don't forget to uh, here write 10 raised to 6. Right? Uh, most of the time the students forget these uh, mega ohm and kilo ohm uh, to substitute in the equation and uh, they get the uh, incorrect answer. Right? So this is I want to uh, uh, make sure that the uh, student. Uh, uh, a yeah, uh, student always uh, be aware about this whether the resistors are in kilo ohms or mega ohms and uh, accordingly uh, put these 10 raised to 3 or 10 raised to 6 in the solution right so when we solve these uh, equation when we solve these uh, values then we get 9.3 into 10 raised to 
minus three. No, yeah, actually it should be 10 raised to minus six. And this is how we get 9.3 micro in here. And uh, so here is the uh, here is the mistake. It should be 10 raised to minus six. And that is how IB is equal to 9.3 microampere. So the first answer of this problem statement we got that is IB base current, right? Uh, moving ahead, let us find out the second current, which is uh, collector current. So collector can be found out by using the equation uh, which shows the relation between the output current collector and the input current base in terms of beta. Uh, from theory perspective, we know that IC collector current is uh, approximately equal to beta times IB. IB just we have found out in the previous slide that is 9.3 into 10 raised to minus 6, which is 9.3 microampere, and beta, the value of the beta is uh, given in the statement, which is equal to 300. So substitute these two values inside this equation and when we solve that one, we get IC collector current is equal to 2.79 milliampere. So this is the second uh, this is the second answer of this uh, example. Uh, moving ahead, VCE, right? So to find out VCE, we have to apply KVL at the output side. So starting from the uh, supply, uh, let us uh, write down the equation side by side from going uh, sorry going from negative to positive terminal we have vcc then from this positive terminal of the resistor to the negative terminal of the resistor and here the current is the collector current so the voltage drop takes place across rc is nothing but the ic into rc then here across the uh, transistor going from positive terminal uh, which is at the collector side and the negative terminal at the emitter side uh, so voltage drop takes place between the collector emitter junction is minus vce is equal to zero so this is the equation uh, we get when we apply the kvl at the output side so by rearranging the terms in this equation that means sending the second and the third term on the right hand side uh, we get this equation VCC is equal to ICRC plus VCE. So from this equation, by making VCE parameter as a subject of equation, uh, we get VCC minus ICRC. What is VCC? VCC is mentioned in the uh, circuit diagram as 10 volts, so substitute 10. What is IC? Uh, we in, in the previous slide, we have found out IC is 2.79 milliampere, so substitute IC and rc is given in the circuit diagram as 2 kilo ohm right so when we solve this equation uh, we get uh, vce is equal to 4.42 volts so this is the third answer for this uh, example right uh, moving ahead uh, let us find out the pd pd is the power dissipation power dissipation equation of the power dissipation is the multiplication of output voltage and output current so in common emitter configuration output voltage is uh, vce and output current is ic which is flowing in the output terminal here the output terminal is the connector so vce into ic uh, vce uh, is equal to 4.42 and uh, ic is equal to 2.79 milliampere so when we substitute and solve this uh, uh, equation we get a power dissipation which is in terms of milliwatt that is equal to 12.3 so this is how we can calculate the different parameters of uh, any kind of uh, configuration uh, any kind of configuration of the transistor okay uh, transistor biasing and need of biasing right so what is biasing from the beginning of this chapter uh, i have uh, spoken so much about the biasing right so in a simple uh, words if uh, i want to define biasing then i usually say that biasing is nothing but when we apply uh, dc supply to the to the transistor that is known as the biasing but let us um, define biasing more technically use of dc potential that is either DC battery or DC power supply to establish 
the operating condition of the transistor is called the biasing right uh, one or other way the meaning of this statement is uh, when you apply dc supply across the terminals of the transistor that uh, event is known as the biasing so transistor can be operated in either of the three regions that we have uh, already understood that when the emitter base junction is uh, forward bias then collector base junction is the reverse bias via batteries and that transistor is uh, operated in the active region and this active region uh, operation helps us in the amplification application when emitter base junction is in the forward bias as well as the collector base junction is also in the forward bias condition then that transistor is in the saturation region and these can be uh, uh, used uh, uh, as one of the condition in uh, switching operation similarly uh, another condition for the switching operation is uh, cutoff region right in one uh, one of the conditions switch is uh, uh, a switch behaves as an uh, closed circuit or a closed switch and uh, in another condition the switch behaves as an uh, open circuit that is off switch right so when the emitter base junction is in the reverse bias condition and collector base junction is also in the reverse bias condition then that transistor is operated in the cutoff region that gives us the second uh, position for the switch so in order to operate in either of these regions right uh, whether to operate transistor in active region saturation region or cutoff region uh, we have to apply dc supply between emitter base junction and collector base junction with correct polarity in order to ensure proper operating region for the transistor right so polarity must be in correct order right so for example to operate bjt in active region then emitter base junction should be in the forward bias so the battery of uh, battery which is going to be connected between a emitter and the base junction polarity of that should uh, that supply should be such a way that these junctions should come in the forward bias condition right similarly when we connect the second battery between the collector base junction then the polarity of the second dc voltage source should be such that these collector base junction should come in the reverse bias condition so polarity is also important while we connect dc battery between the terminals of the transistors when we want to operate transistor in one of these region either in active or saturation or the cutoff region transistor biasing and the need of the biasing right so biasing in the electronic means establishing predetermined voltages or the currents at the various points of an electronic circuit for the purpose of establishing proper operating condition in electronic components right so we can achieve specific uh, function from the transistor or by connecting dc source between the terminals with the appropriate polarities need of biasing why do we need biasing uh, in this uh, transistor or in any el electronic circuit the first requirement of the biasing is to stabilize the operating point so within few moments i'm going to define the operating point so you will understand uh, uh, what is the meaning of operating uh, operating point and uh, yes what is the meaning of the operating point second is that to set the operating point at the center of the dc load line so here the second terminology is the dc door uh, dc load line so that also i am going to define within a uh, few moments uh, the third uh, option is to reduce the value of the stability factor so another new terminology stability factor so after i cover this operating point and this low line i will define the stability factor so how the biasing affects this uh, uh, stability factor for the transistor and stabilize the collector current against the temperature variation we will see that temperature uh, many a times temperature affects the many parameters of the transistor here one 
parameter that is collector current uh, is mentioned right so what is the effect of temperature on the collector current uh, that we will see uh, then uh, to operate the transistor in active region as an amplifier or to operate the transistor as a switch right so as i as we discussed uh, in the previous slide that to have the operation like uh, uh, like a uh, amplifier or uh, on switch off switch we must operate transistor in one of the region so for that we need the biasing so these are the uh, reasons uh, because of which we need to bias the transistor with the dc supply along with the appropriate polarity so let us discuss about the dc load line and operating point q q is the notation used for q is the notation uh, used for uh, operating uh, to define the operating point so with reference to common emitter configuration i'm going to uh, discuss i'm going to describe the dc load line and the operating point so the technical definition of the dc load line is it represents the desirable combination of collector current ic and the collector emitter voltage vce right what is dc load line a line there is nothing but a simple type of line but it represents the desirable combination desirable combination of which parameters the first parameter is the output current collector ic and the output voltage collector emitter voltage vce that is the dc load line it is drawn when no signal is given to the input right now we'll see that DC load line is uh, drawn on the output characteristic of this uh, common emitter configuration. Uh, uh, common emitter configuration. Uh, so you will better understand at that point of time. But uh, while drawing that or while uh, plotting that DC load line on that graph, uh, we have to make sure that there is no signal given at the input terminal. So this open. Uh, this input side should behave as an open circuit and the transistor is biased with the dc supply uh, we have to make sure that here uh, vcc should be connected to the transistor so for given circuit right so let us first of all derive the equation for the dc load line and then after that with the help of that equation we will uh, plot that line on the output characteristic of this common emitter configuration. So for the given circuit, applying the KVL low at the output loop, right? So in the uh, uh, just before starting this theory, we solved one example. So in that example, we also uh, we uh, applied KVL at the output side, right? So uh, the same way. Uh, here also to find out the equation mathematical representation for DC load line we apply uh, AVL at the output side so VCC minus ICRC minus VCE is equal to zero and from that when we make VCC as a subject of equation so the equation becomes VCC is equal to ICRC plus VCE right uh, the equation comes from this one VCC starting from the supply and drop voltage drop across RC resistor because current flowing through the RC resistor is IC and uh, drop takes place across uh, collector emitter junction that is VCE is equal to zero. So this is the equation we get when we uh, apply the KVL at the output side, right? So from this equation. Uh, this uh, from this equation we get this one right and from the equation number one when we make ic as a subject of equation so we have to send this vc on the left hand side and then rc in the denominator we get ic is equal to vcc minus vce divided by rc Right. So when we rearrange this equation, we get IC is equal to minus 1 upon RC into VCE. Right. That means I am sending this RC in the denominator of each term. And I am writing this term at, 
as a first term in this equation. So minus one upon RC into VCE, minus one upon RC into VCE, and this term on the second position, that plus VCC divided by RC. So this is the equation number two, and that is the mathematical representation of the load line, right? That is the mathematical representation of the load line. This equation we are going to plot on the output characteristic. Uh, can you just guess that uh, out, uh, output characteristic uh, should be uh, between which two parameters? In the previous session, we uh, understood that output characteristic uh, is the graphical representation between two output parameters. So here, the output parameter is the collector current and the collector emitter voltage, where this voltage, output voltage, should be on the x axis and output current should be on the y axis. So the uh, equation number two, which is in the previous slide, that represents the straight line, right? So what is a straight line? Straight line is nothing but the line of equation, which is uh, nothing but y is equal to mx plus c is equal to mx plus c, right? So if I compare this equation number two, then what is y? Y is nothing but ic. Right, so IC is on the Y axis in the output characteristic. And what is X over here? When we compare the Y is equal to MX plus C with this equation, X is nothing but VCE. And as I said that VCE is on the X axis. And what is M over here? So when we compare this equation with this one, M is equal to minus one upon RC. So that is the slope of the line, right? And what is C? C is nothing but VCC divided by RC. So this is how by comparing this uh, equation with our basic equation of the line, we get uh, y, x, m, and c. And with the help of that, we can uh, draw the uh, DC the load line on the output characteristic. Right. So when we uh, substitute VC is equal to zero in the previous uh, equation, then uh, we get IC is equal to VCC divided by RC. So that, that means uh, when the magnitude on the X axis is equal to zero, X itself is zero. Voltage drop between collector emitter terminal is equal to zero. When we assume that then from the equation number two, we can write IC is equal to VCC divided by RC. That is, that shows the maximum current in the collector terminal. So that is also represented as IC max is equal to VCC divided by RC. Uh, that is also related to the saturation condition. So right in the saturation condition, maximum amount of the current uh, flow occurs to the component. So we can write IC uh, saturation is equal to VCC divided by RC. Okay, the second condition, if we make collected current is equal to zero in the, uh, in the equation number two, then the equation number two results into VCE is equal to VCC, right? That means when there is no flow of the current in the collector terminal, then the voltage drop across uh, collector emitter junction is equal to uh, supply voltage VCC, right? So that is the maximum voltage appears across the collector emitter junction, right? And uh, when emit uh, when the collector current is zero, at that time the whatever the voltage we get across uh, collector emitter junction that represents the cutoff uh, region on the output characteristics. So that voltage is uh, cutoff voltage. So VCE cutoff is equal to VCC, right? So this is how we can draw the load line. So this is the load line. This is uh, plotted on this output characteristic of the common emitter configuration. Here you can see that 
uh, on the x-axis output voltage VCE on the y-axis output current is IC and this is the load line when the VCE is equal to zero we got IC maximum is equal to VCC divided by RC that is the first point it is also known as the saturation point and when we substituted in equation number two IC is equal to zero we got VCE is equal to VCC uh, that point is known as the cutoff point so the line passes through these uh, two points is known as the DC load line the line passes through these saturation point and the cutoff point is known as the DC load line right so here it is written that line joining the saturation and cutoff point is called the DC load line it is a straight line as shown in the figure any value corresponding to IC and VCE will be on this load line right the DC load line is shown with the output characteristic of the transistor so this is how uh, we can mention DC load, uh, DC load line Q point it is also referred as Q cent point there are uh, multiple names of these uh, uh, parameter the first one is the Q second is the Q cent another is the operating point the next is the bias point so Q point is also called as operating point bias point or the Q cent point it is the point on the DC load line which represents the DC current IC through the transistor and the voltage VC across the transistor in steady state condition what is Q cent Q cent is the synonym of steady state right so during the steady state condition what is the magnitude of the current flowing through the collector terminal and what is the magnitude of the voltage drop takes place between collector emitter junction the point on the output characteristic which gives us such type of information is known as the operating point it is also known as the q cent point so the coordinates of the q points uh, the coordinates of the q points are ic and vce Right. so here you can see that in this uh, diagram here it is written q point right so this q point has two coordinate one is uh, one is x coordinate and the second is the y coordinate x coordinate is corresponding to vce and the y coordinate is corresponding to ice right so q point is nothing but it is a location of a point on this DC load line with reference to these VCE and IC parameters right so the position of the Q point on the DC load line depends on application of the transistor obviously this portion is the active region so when the transistor is operated in the active region this Q point uh, the, the the range of the q point will be somewhere here uh, sorry mm -hmm. starting from this point to this point right when the transistor is operated in the saturation region that means the operating point must be somewhere between these two points that is uh, vcc divided by rc and this point and when the transistor is operated in the cutoff region at that time the operating point should be between these two points so obviously biasing of the transistor decides the location of the operating point q on the output characteristic of common emitter configuration right so location of this q point is dependent on biasing condition of the transistor so when transistor is used as an amplifier that means uh, we are operating transistor in the active region so the operating point q should set at the center of the dc load line Right, which is uh, given in the previous slide so to avoid the distortion in the output waveform here you can see that the operating point is the operating point is at the center position of this DC load line right that means uh, uh, 
transistor with this characteristic is uh, used for the amplif uh, amplification purpose. So position of the Q point on DC load line is determined uh, based on its application, right? So as you can see that here, uh, when we want uh, transistor to act as an on switch, then the operating point should be located at cutoff point that is over here. And when we want to uh, have the off switch function from the transistor, then the operating point, sorry, uh, for the on state condition, the location of the operating point should be over here. And for the off state condition, the location of this Q point should be at uh, this point. And when we need uh, amplifier operation from the transistor, at that time, the position of the Q point should be at the center of the DC load line over here in the active region. So factors about affecting the stability of the Q point, right? Uh, you can see that uh, while taking the amplifier operation from the transistor, then the operating point should remain at this position. It should not go towards upside or towards the downside. Otherwise, we cannot get proper amplification from the circuit diagram. Okay. So there should not be too much variation in operating point Q. So if variation is less, that means that system, that circuit is more stable. If Q point is shifting upside and downside continuously, that means stability of that transistor is not good. It is less stable. Okay, So that stability and stability factor is defined based on this operating point behavior. So ideally Q point must be stable as I said that uh, it should not shift upward or downward on the DC load line continuously, but practically Q point is unstable, right? You can see that here, practically the Q point is unstable. That is always uh, upward or downward movement of operating point over the DC load line because of certain factors. And what are those factors? The factors are mentioned over here. The factors which affect the stability of the operating point are the first one is the temperature, change in the temperature. Second, change in the value of the beta DC of the transistor. And the last one, variation in the transistor parameters from one device to another device. Because of these three factors, it may happen that location of the operating point gets, location of the operating point gets shifted continuously from one location to another location because of that we may not get stable operation from the transistor right so the first factor is the temperature the second factor is the beta dc and the third factor is the transistor parameters which are changing device to device so let us uh, talk about the first factor uh, Operating point instability due to temperature. How does this temperature affect the location of the uh, location of the operating point? So here it is written that as temperature changes, the current through transistor will also change. Why? Because here this transistor is made up of the semiconducting material. Uh, it has uh, P type layer and N type layer. So the current of uh, transistor is made up of electrons and holes majority and the minority carriers right and uh, in one of the subject we understood that each and every material has uh, some kind of uh, temperature coefficient either it may be positive temperature coefficient or negative to negative temperature coefficient so obviously the the behavior of that material changes with, uh, with respect to temperature and hence 
the parameters of this material gets changed. So that is written over here. So as temperature changes, the current through the transistor will also change. And due to change in the junction temperature, that is base emitter and the emitter collector, uh, sorry, uh, yes, uh, junction of the transistor, it's parameter like voltage between base emitter junction or beta DC, that is the current gain, and the ICBO, that is the leakage current, will change. And finally, because of that, there is change in the operating point, right? Uh, second reason for uh, instability in operating point is the variation in beta DC, right? So when beta DC gets changed, then location of the operating point also gets changed. Why? Because you can see that collector current of the transistor is related with the beta DC. How? We know the equation that is IC is equal to beta times IB. So if beta is changing, that means IC is changing. And if IC is changing, then that is one of the part of the operating point. So if IC is changing, that means the location of the operating points get change right so if ic gets increased then the oper operating point moves uh, towards upside and if icq decreases that means if beta dc decreases then ic decreases and if ic decreases then operating point shifts towards the downside and this is the third parameter because of that we may face instability in the operating point and that is the transistor parameters. Parameters like beta DC of two transistors with the same number type and the manufacturer are slightly different in the value. And so when one transistor is replaced by another transistor, its collector current will also change. And because of that, operating point gets shift. Right? Many times uh, I uh, spoke about these things in the lecture that uh, even if we uh, manufacture millions of transistors in a one day, in a one batch, uh, you, uh, one batch, then also the characteristic of one transistor and the characteristic of the another transistor do not match exactly. There is always a slightly, uh, there is always a slight variation between the first transistor and the tenth transistor, or maybe hundredth transistor, or maybe the thousandth transistors. Right, and because of that, uh, when one transistor is replaced by the another transistor, even if it is made in the same batch on the same day, but uh, we may face these. Uh, uh, location shifting of the operating point so that also causes the instability in the operating point this stability factor so stability factor indicates the stability of the operating point against the variation in the transistor parameter right so stability factor is uh, st stability factor gives us idea about the how much stable that circuit or how much stable that electronic component is. Stability of the operating point is in transistor depends on the following three parameters. The first is the reverse leakage current that is ICO. Second is the current gain beta DC and the third is the base emitter voltage VBE. Right. So with reference to all these three parameters, let us define the stability factor. So stability factor S is the ratio of change in the collector current due to change in the reverse saturation leakage current when beta DC and VBE are constant. Right. So here the stability factor is uh, described based on change in ICO, based on the reverse leakage current only, while keeping beta DC and VBE, these two parameters constant. So that is the stability factor S, 
then stability factor s days where it shows the ratio between the change in the collector current due to change in the base emitter voltage while keeping the beta dc and ico constant so that is the stability factor s dash and the stability factor s double dash means change in the collector current due to change in the beta dc while keeping vbe and ico constant right so these are the three ways by which we define the stability factor because these three parameters the first is the reverse leakage current second is the beta dc current gain and the third one is the drop between base and emitter terminal these three parameters are responsible for the uh, magnitude of stability factor right uh, here the note is given that ideally the value of stability factor should be zero it means that even though there is a uh, even though there is change in the reverse leakage current there should be there should not be change in the ic right but practically it should be as small as possible so ideally the magnitude of stability factor should be zero but practically it should be as small as possible so that's it for the session uh, so in this session i have covered uh, uh, two three most important points uh, one is uh, regarding dc load line second is regarding the operating point and uh, need of biasing as well as uh, what is uh, stability factor and what are the factors affecting the stability of the operating points and uh, how can we define the stability factor uh, with reference to uh, other parameters like uh, reverse leakage current, current gain beta DC, and the drop takes place between base emitter junction. Right. So uh, go through the material at least once, and when you find uh, any difficulty to understand or if you have any doubt regarding these uh, topics, then feel free to contact. Thank you. Thank you very much.